for imagination, a sense of truth, and the feelings of responsibility. These three forces are the very nerve of education. Yeah, good evening. I'm so sorry, I have to temporarily to off my video because my line here is not so stable. Yeah, I will turn switch on my video as soon as I can. Yeah, welcome to welcome everyone to tonight online sharing session. I'm Samantha from Kongsi Academy. Yeah, Kongsi Academy is a division of Kongsi Co-op, a consumer co-op. Uh, which we advocate a harmonious ecosystem for people, soil, and nature. So in Academy, our intention is to provide a more diverse and humanity-based education. We strive to realize that in a community or in a family, the picture, there will be a gardener, a water teacher, a nutritionist, a caregiver, and an economist. So this is our aspiration for the academy. Yeah, today, one of the most significant demographic shift that we are experiencing is the aging population. Over the decades, with advancement of in healthcare, improved living conditions, declining birth rate, have contributed to an increase in the proportion of older adults in our society. So to address all the implications of the aging population, actually we require multi-approach, which include the healthcare system, a social welfare, employment, the living environment, as well as the societal attitude. So what about an elder in a family? When there's an older person in a family, what's the role within the family? And what's the challenge? Just that are both youngster and the old babies. Sorry, Samantha, cannot hear you. Hello, yeah, is it okay? Uh, you are off just now. Uh, what about now? Now so okay. All right. Okay. Yeah. Uh, when we're talking about you know that's the oldest uh, present in a family and the role what we play and the challenges that both you know the youngster and older they face and how could we create a community that embraces the diversity regardless of the age and the most important how we prepare for aging when we are still young. Yeah. So, so this is all the questions that we might have in our mind and also could be some of the challenges that we are facing now. So today we are honored to have our dear teachers, uh, Rob Heine from Germany and his uh, home care student local weeping for this session. Teacher Rob is a certified nurse and anthroposophic nursing specialist and since 2015 until 2019, teacher Rob has traveled to Malaysia to facilitate the anthroposophic nursing workshop in MPMT and Colisco conference. So in year 2016, he initiates the two-year anthroposophy home care training in Malaysia, and I joined the second batch in 2019. Yeah. So a teacher of also the president of International Council of Anthroposophy Nursing Associations, and he's active as the coordinator of the International Forum of Anthroposophy Nursing. And he lectures in various countries and has published new numbers of the contribution on
Hey, hello everyone. Sorry, I think Samantha has dropped off. But anyway, I think she has uh, introduced uh, our teacher, uh, Mr. Rob Heine. And uh, I will um, yeah, pass on the um, stage to um, Sir. Yes, thank you, Kelly. Thank you, Samantha, for a nice introduction and also for the initiative to initiate um, such a home care and conference and especially on the elderly. As Samantha mentioned, um, elderly care is something that is very much needed in our societies because we have a big democratic demographic change in our times, and this will keep on for the next decades. And this means, for example, in Germany, one third of the population is over 60 years old. And the model that the young families care for the older ones and the elderly take care of their grandchildren, this model does not function anymore. And this has many, many reasons, economical reasons, but it, has, it is just a fact that in the future, elderly people will live more for their own and need new kinds of communities to grow older, to live in their third or fourth part of their lives. So this has a big impact also on the families because many of the elderly they expect their children and their children-in-law to care for them. And this is really a disruption in our societies that we have this expectation. And a lot of many, many uh, people, young people feel obliged to care for their parents, but they come into a conflict with their own interests, the interests of their career and the interests of their families. Sometimes they live far apart from the place where their parents live. And so it needs also, they have to find a solution for these expectations from the parents and or their feeling of being obliged to care for them. Samantha mentioned something very important. If we talk about advanced age and how to care in a beautiful way, to care in a respectful way for the elderly, then we should know how aging goes. What is the path of aging? What are the steps we will need when we get older? When I was young, even when I was 10 years before, I couldn't imagine how it is to be over 60 years old. It was different in my imagination than it is right now. And of course, when I was 20, People over 30 were old men, old women. So how does our consciousness change when we age? How do our intentions, how do our imagination, our wishes change when we grow older? These and a lot of other questions we will touch in this conference for the elderly 
which takes place in Kuala Lumpur um, at the 19th and 20th of August. I want to give you a brief overview on the program, and therefore I will share the screen with you. Yes, this is an overview on the program. Uh, we will have a mixture during our conference, a mixture of lectures that will be about the process of aging, the social impacts, and also the question, what does it mean for my life and how is aging, as I mentioned. We also will talk about the challenges of aging, like the typical um, diseases that occur in advanced age. But in the first lecture, we will give an overview on the social, cultural, and individual challenges uh, in elderly care. We will look on the specific, um, on the characteristics of um, the different ages in our life. Then we will have a demonstration of an example, what, how could care in dignity, care with respect mean? Because many of us cannot imagine how it is if we, if there is a need to do body care for our fathers, our mothers, our grandfathers, our grandmothers. How would it be to change the nappies for elderly? How would it be to give someone food who is not able to eat by him or self? So, and to have good examples, to have good inner pictures, how it can be done in dignity. This is the target of this second lecture and demonstration. Then we will have um, enough time for practicing. We will have practical experiences with foot bath, sounding washing, uh, rhythmical Einreibung, a so-called rhythmical Einreibung, which is a soft massage, and also nutrition for the elderly. This is a beautiful example for how we arranged a foot bath in a big group in, I think it was in Malaysia in the 1950s, in, in the 2015s. And also, this is a, an image of a, a so-called sounding washing. You see um, a caregiver doing such a hand bath. And we will demonstrate that and some of you will have the experience of it. Then um, also the so-called rhythmical Einreibung, which is a soft massage. We will have a demonstration and you can learn uh, to do this um, soft massage on the feet and on the calf. And um, the home care group that Samantha mentioned, they will help and assist you in learning this kind of very special and effective touch. Then of course, Nutrition is something very important, not only for the elderly, but um, for everybody. But um, what is um, a good quality? What can people with special disabilities, if they have no teeth, for example, what can they eat? What can they digest? What kind of nutrition is recommended in diabetes and um, in special diseases. 
So that's, this is one aspect of this nutrition course, but another aspect is that we become aware of the quality of our food. And Kongsi Academy provides also courses in, on nutrition. And there is a lot of experience in that field. And you will have the possibility really to taste differences um, of qualities in vegetable and fruit and um, cereals and other nutrition. Then we have a break and <clears throat> we'll have another um, practical experience. And um, this is an experience with so-called Eurythmy. Eurythmy is a move, moving or movement exercise. It's a special kind of, let's say, dancing, but not with music or in, in our case, not with music, I guess but with vowels and we move uh, on verses and also we'll have some social exercises and one uh, good example you can see here. Um, there is not so much movement because people are sitting on the floor, but they are passing uh, these wooden balls. So it was really an inspiring, inspiring experience to have um, these bowls pass from one to another in a rhythmical way. So this is just to give you an idea <clears throat> what Eurythmy could be. Yes, and then we have also um, a session or groups that um, are practicing storytelling. Storytelling means that you are um, you work in groups of three, in very small groups, and in these groups, um, uh, you have you will get some questions, get questions that lead you a bit into your memory of your past, of your own story, of your own history, of your own biography, and so this is also something that can be very inspiring. Yes, to look on your own children or on your own childhood when you was when you were very uh, young what was your first memory maybe and then what was about um, yes when you grow older what all, all we will look on all these different kinds of uh, um, of different parts of our biography and we will share that with others Yes, then in the evening, we, there will be uh, another um, session, another lecture, and we will look on our senses. The senses uh, are the first organs that become old. Some of us uh, wear glasses since uh, their childhood. Others start to wear glasses when they come to school, but most of us wear glasses when we are over 50, over 60 years old. And also we need devices uh, for hearing and maybe taste and smelling becomes different. So uh, it is worth to talk about the senses and how the, se the senses and sense perception changes in our life. And what does it mean? What is the impact of that for the elderly? On Sunday morning, we will start with um, an introduction into the biography of, the, um, of, of us and of the human being. Um, and we look on the rhythms in human life because our life is not constantly flowing. There are uh, deep um, impacts in our biography not only given from, uh, from the outside, from uh, the outside environment, from society, but also in the inner development, we go through 
different rhythms and we will learn about these rhythms from um, childhood to advanced age. Then it, uh, in the morning we will have another time for you with me and storytelling and then in the afternoon after lunch break um, we will have a look on uh, diseases that are typical in advanced age. This is that might be um, needed and helpful, especially for those who are still in duty to care for their uh, parents. And sometimes you will meet um, uh, diseases like dementia, Parkinson, stroke, or others. And then it could be helpful to learn something about these diseases and the possibilities to care for them. Yes, and last but not least, we uh, should have a look on the end of our life because our life will end definitely with dying. And so dying is of course uh, an important issue for all, uh, for all of us, especially when we are growing old. Then we will ask us and should ask us and talk about that, what does death for us mean? What are we afraid of? What are our hopes? How do we wish that our last years, maybe our last weeks and days and moments should be? So this is the final part of our conference. And yes, I hope that this gave you some impressions of what we can do. And of course, especially after the lectures, I try to keep them as short as possible so that we are able to share your questions and have a lot of um, Q and A sessions after our lectures. So that it is not only a one way road like it is now uh, in our online conference, but we should keep in dialogue during these days. Yeah, so far, do you have questions or remarks? Yes, do you have any questions that you'd like to raise or burning question in your head that you'd like to find out more that uh, our teacher Rob maybe can give you, a, could give you some guidelines or an answer? You may raise your hand or type in the chat box. Or even if you want to, if you have, a, um, if you want something that we should um, touch on our conference, it would be very valuable. Um, if you have a specific question, we should focus on in our conference. Yeah, any questions? that uh, you may type a question for Rob here in the chat box or we okay, ask uh, so there's a question about how about a topic about the big door. Yes, it's a very good and important question. Bed sore is uh, one of the most frequent and difficult um, diseases we have for those who cannot move by their own in the bed when they are uh, extremely ill um, or paralyzed, then um, uh, bed sore is a big issue. And uh, we will talk about uh, prevention. And if there is a, a more specific question on it, we can also talk about uh, treatments that are possible. Any more questions, sir? Yes, oh, yeah. one question is about the memory. And um, yes, 
uh, if it, it becomes a disease, then um, it is, uh, we have to differentiate if it is a dementia or how can we compensate our memory um, when it is not working as proper as we want to. Memory problems are all, not only problems of the elderly. Um, youngsters, when they need to learn vocabulary, also <laughs> complain about a bad memory. But um, yes, of course, it's an issue. And we will talk about it um, with regard on dementia and also about prevention. How can we avoid um, that our memory got weaker and weaker? Uh, there was also a few questions asking, is there any guideline, guidance to caretaker if elderly refuse to accept all these techniques? Yes. Yes. Um, there is no handbook for that, but I can, um, I can give you some examples um, if you have specific questions how to overcome that. You know, a lot of things can be behind. Most, in most cases, these are role, if it happens in, in, uh, in your families, these are role conflicts and we should talk about it, especially how to clarify the roles of the caregivers. These are the daughters in most cases or the daughters-in-law and those who need care. And if people refuse care, um, ah, despite such role problems, then um, it is that there are indeed some techniques to approach people in a very gentle way so that they learn to accept what is needed. It is always the question also of the will. Can we accept the will of people even if we do not really understand what the intention is if somebody refuses to be washed, for example? It's very important to talk about it. Right? So there are some questions like how to balance the, between the elderly wishes for care versus the caregiver wishes to care for them, you know, for example, the style difference or the method difference. Yes. <clears throat> you can ask yourself if you if you are ill and you because you feel sick. And there's a caregiver who wants to give you something to eat and you don't want to, but he has an intention. He says, you must, you should, and you don't want to. Who is right? So I think as caregivers, we are in a very powerful, powerful position and we have to ask ourselves is if our intentions are really what the patient, what the family members need, or is it just our imagination? How can we find out the real needs of the other? I know that sometimes there are conflicts. Um, let's go back to bed sore. Sometimes um, people who suffer from bed sore, they have big wounds 
on their back. And they need to change the position every second hour, sometimes even more often. And to change the position could be painful. And then in some cases they really refuse to change the position. But if you do not change the position, the bed sore, the wound would become terrible, horrible. So there is a need to change the position even against the will and the resistance of the patient. And then it is important to communicate that and to have a technique that avoids pain in when you change the position, when you move the patient. And there are some techniques and there also are some devices who could help. So we will talk about that and also um, to learn where you can organize aid if such a situ situation occurs and you are not able to manage a situation like it. Mm. Thank you, sir. Uh, so there is a question that we turn uh, in the Mandarin. It means like, you know, how our elderly can could live with a meaning, meaning for the meaning uh, and with a dignity. Yeah. How they can find the meaning of life when they're getting old you know, with the purpose sometimes? Yes. Um... I think you are referring to elderly who say, my life has no meaning anymore. I cannot do what I liked to do during my life. There is nobody who loves me. There is nobody who, who I love. And so they say, my life has no meaning. And in the mood they are talking about it, you can feel it is a kind of depression from which they suffer. So it is not so much a philosophical question, what is the meaning of my life? But it is really, it's really a disease. It is a kind of a disease and there should be a medical approach, also a medical approach and not only a philosophical approach. But of course, even a depression in advanced age or a disease in an advanced age or just the fact that people are longing for dying for many years. They are 80 years and they think, oh, okay, now it's enough. Then they are 90 years and say, oh yes, was a nice life, now it's enough. And then they become 100. What is the meaning of that life? It's interesting and we should ask ourselves, how would it be for us? And if you find an approach from ourselves, then I think it's possible to understand what's going on in people who cannot really find a meaning, a purpose of it. Now, to, to look into a, a different direction. If you ask yourself, or if you talk with your parents or those who need care about what will happen after death, then the purpose of life, the meaning of life, sometimes very much depend on their understanding of what is after life. If there is just nothing, if they believe there is nothing but darkness and deep sleep, then of course, the time of waiting for this nothingness can be really boring or painful. And so it's different to find a meaning of life if you feel that death is ultimate. 
and there is nothing beyond. And that would be different if you have the idea, maybe the knowledge, maybe a belief that there is something beyond. There is a different kind of existence beyond. And then you can look on the last years of your life as a preparation of this time beyond. And this changes your view on the meaning of life extremely. And yes, this will also be part of our conference to talk about these different perspectives. But there will be not one answer that fits for all, but it will stimulate that you can find your own approaches to this question and maybe you, you can help also for those who have this question in advanced age to help them to find their own answer to the question of what is the meaning of the situation I am in now. Yes, thank you, sir. And uh, there's one more question, it's quite interesting, that about the diet. You know, well, this uh, the diet change will be will much more help uh, when I went for the elderly. Yes, the diet. It's important. Um, first of all, we have to know that our our uh, needs of nutrition change during our life and especially in advanced age. So that's very natural. And then um, there is always a conflict between what is healthy and what are our given habits. And to change habits is one of the most difficult things as all the smokers know when they try to stop smoking. Or if you like sweets, if you like chocolate, to stop eating chocolate is very difficult. Even if you know that it is not very healthy. So we will look on nutrition, not only on the aspect what is healthy for the body, but also what is healthy for the soul. And you can ask one more question. You can ask what kind of food should I eat that it is not only healthy for my body, not only healthy for my soul, but also healthy for the social environment I live? How is food produced? And so also there are many aspects and we will have a look on it. Just one answer, maybe I understood the question, your question right. Um, sometimes, especially elderly people eat extremely unhealthy food, not balanced food. They like to eat only this or that. And how is it possible to change that? Especially di diabetics are very, very difficult to feed. And yes, it's always to balance out aspects from, from health, aspects from the habits, and also aspects from the environment and economical aspects. They also play an important role. But we will not avoid getting older by a healthy diet. Yeah, so I think uh, that's the last question. And also for my question, you know, about um, 
we get to know some of the biography works, yeah, the learning, and then how this uh, biography works, you know, to find the meanings of life. We could, could, could it be a complementary uh, for the elderly care or for the person, you know, when they go through the life, the life process of the life journey? Yes, um, of course, if we do biography work with elderly, it depends very much on how old they are and how their memory works. Um, it, is, it is very strange. Sometimes the memory in elderly works extremely good for a specific period of their lives. And then you just give a word or a song or a smell or a feeling of that time and then they start with their memories and then they explore their memories and they will not stop talking about it sometimes they will repeat it and repeat it but it just shows that they really can live in that time and biography work in general has the um, has the goal to bring them to connect yourself with your memories and to look on these memories and to taste them and to smell them and to really step deep into your memory. And biography work for the younger, maybe for us, has a bit a different uh, goal. Uh, sometimes we want to interpret, we want to understand, we want to find the red thread which is going through our life. And this is more an intellectual understanding of our biography. And we are keen to know about these aspects when we are younger. My experience is that it is not so much the interest of the elderly um, to uh, to look on specific patterns during their life. Maybe they know their patterns, but they really love to feel connected with their past. And this is this allows them to also to let it go. And to let go things, to resign in a specific way, that is a task of becoming older. And so the target of biography work is of course a bit different according to ages and of course according to our specific interest in it. Good. Yeah, thank you, sir. I think there's a lot of questions, you know, keep coming up. And I think because uh, this is the topic and which is very important uh, to all of us, you know, whether you are young or you are going to become the elder, you know, so this is what we concern. And most of us, you know, at least we have one elder, older person in the family, we could be the caretaker uh, uh, too. Yeah, so there's a lot of challenges and um, the faith to face yeah, and the knowledge that we need to acquire so that we can take care well uh, to the elder person as well, uh, the caretaker like, like us. Yeah. So, sir, so I think um, we will gather some other information for you, you know, so that maybe uh, for those who have a, a great interest in elderly care, yeah, like this, um, do join us this August. Yeah, so that uh, you can, uh, you have able and have a chances to get to know more uh, in depth of this knowledge. And this, uh, the conference will be facilitated by our teacher, Rolf. Yeah, so, um, uh, yeah, and follow that, I would like to and also invite, you know, another uh, the teacher, Rolf, a student, weeping, uh, to share with us her experience on how she could take in care of uh, her parents, you know, with the home care techniques, yeah. And uh, let me give a, share, a short introduction about weeping. 
Yeah, we think the complete uh, anthroposophic home care two years training in 2018. And she's very, she's very passionate in community education. So she, uh, all the, she facilitated various uh, workshops around Malaysia, such as art, home care, health and wellness. Yeah, so like, uh, here, now I would like to pass the floor uh, to Weiping um, for her sharing her experience. Hi, good evening, everyone. I will just laugh at my picture just now because that was few many years ago. I look so young. It's so much different from right now. <laughs> <laughs> that is called elderly. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. So first of all, I would like to share with everyone that uh, how I come across the uh, anthroposophy home care training. Uh, it was, uh, I started to learn anthroposophy home care uh, from 2016. Okay, that was the first time I saw my teacher, Jean Feiner. And now uh, the courses is about six module and we have completed uh, this training at the year 2019, okay? So at first, uh, when I attend this training, I do not know why I should attend it, but I know something that, um, a reason that I should learn something before anything happened, you know? The, as we know that all oh, this society, a lot of people are, a lot of family are facing uh, sickness, especially dementia for the elderly, you know, heart attack, or even though like cancer. Like my, my partners, my spouse, my husband was actually diagnosed with cancer in year 2002. So, and he passed away on 2004. So since then I started to learn and Greedy, really, I would say that I was craving to learn a lot of uh, techniques or knowledge, how to be healthy and how to take care of the uh, six people. So until year, uh, I attended the IPMT in year 2000, uh, I think it's 14, it's the, my first year. Uh, actually, IPMT started on year 2013, but I joined on the second year in 2014. And also year 2015 was the police school and the following years or so. So uh, the, for the home care, I started to learn in 2016. So I, when I attend, after I attend this uh, home care, um, uh, I, I was very happy because I found something which is very close near to what I, I, I came to, to learn because um, Right now, a lot of people, when they are sick, they will started to eat medicines or see doctor. But I always ask myself, is that the only way? Because my husband died in cancer. I think many people also die in cancer. But what should we do? Or I would say that what can we do to prevent all these things happen? Rather than when we are sick, then only we look for something to help us. So if we are sick, then only we look for something to help us that is too late. If you are lucky, maybe some miracle will happen, but not everybody. Miracle will not happen in everybody, everyone's. So it's good that we learn something to take care. And we also need to learn something to take care of others also. Because of I take care of my husband, I really um, know that this is very important. And my parents is still alive until today. So I also need to learn something to take care of them. That's why home care for me is, is very good. And in this home care, I learned a lot of techniques from Ralph, from my teacher's Ralph, like what he mentioned just now, sharing that uh, you read uh, rhythmical, arrival massage, sound wash, washing, a foot bath, you know, all this we learned in this training. And I find this training, uh, are very touching, you know, all these applications are so touching because when I saw my teachers, the way he gave this 
uh, care to the others, the gesture that he provides to the, to the giver, to, to the receiver, is so much warm and love. So this is something different that I cannot find in any hospital in our Malaysia. <laughs> in Malaysia, I, oh, when my husband is sick, I face all those nurses, which is very rude, uh, doesn't have a uh, warm hearted or love to take care of the patient. You know, when, when the patients see at them, they are fear. When the patient look at the doctors also with fear, how can the patients be recovered when they are in this condition? So what are the gestures or what are the, the way that we should give to the giver, to the receiver, which is very important. So from throughout this training, I, 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 I discovered that the way and gestures that we giving to the receiver is very important. Then that is the way that our teachers just now said, the dignity, the, how we dig the dignity to the elderly, which is very, very important. And like I said just now, when I, when I learned this, when I attend this training, I do not know whether I, I, it, can, <laughs> it is helpful to me or not. Until in year 2018, my father was uh, attacked or have this heart attack. Uh, and uh, the doctor said that he must do bypass. Stem or balloon doesn't help him because the blockage are too much. Uh, it is impossible to, to implant so many stems in the heart and it will get worse if we do that. So the, the at last doctor advised that we, my, my father should do bypass, but my father doesn't want to, to do it. So luckily, so, so in time that that time, sir was in Malaysia and having a training with us. So I asked my teacher, Ralph, what should I do? And the first thing uh, teacher Ralph asked me, what did your fathers expect? I was so curious why teacher asked me these questions, not immediately teach me what to do, what to do. <laughs> why? Because we should respect the patient, what they want. And I also see this is very important. Because in, beside my, my, uh, my, my friends, they also have this problem. If the patient does not accept what we are giving to them, it doesn't help. We will, it will only help if the patient, patient willing to, to accept what we give them. So do something people need, not do what we need. This is very important. So my father, since my father doesn't want to do bypass, that's why uh, the uh, teachers Ralph teach me uh, how to take care of my, my father. From what I learned these two years uh, training, these two, since 2006 to 2019, what I learned. I learned rhythmic arrival, I learned sound washing, I learned foot bath, I even learned a lot of uh, compressors. So teachers teach me from the day of when my when in the morning to the night, what should I do to take care of my father? And it was a miracle uh, after I take care of my father. I really take give hundred, I take care of my father uh whole day. Okay. And and it's it's really a miracle happened to my father. And he really uh recovered after this. Uh, after I will take it, I will care giving to him. After the when I send him home, he does not able to speak. He was so tired and breathless uh, because of the heart problem. So I every day I, I give him compressors, I give him foot bath, I give him um, uh, vitamin R bomb, you know, day by day. So he he recover every day. This is something good sign to me. And after two weeks, he's able to stand up and leave his room and have dinner on the table with us. And after two months, 
he can go out from my house, he can drive. And until today, 2023, he is totally recovered. He can drive. He is already 83 years old. And every day he drives and every day he do exercise. He, he do a lot of walking. When he feel boring, he go to walk, you know. But he, her, his life is very um, routine, you know. What time he wake up, what time he's supposed to eat, what time he should read newspaper, all our things, <laughs> every day do the same thing. But I find that this is very good. And at least he know how to take care of himself. So I really feel grateful. I learned all this technique from my teachers, Ralph Hyman. And I also hope that everyone should come and attend this elderly conference. At least we learn something. What is anthroposophy home care? What is anthroposophy elderly care? It's an open eyes and something very new to us. Rather than we know that, okay, take medicine, operation, chemo, all these things. You know, there are so many alternate ways that we are not aware. So you should come to this conference. We should not only, we should not learn something which when we needed, that is too late. You have no time to learn already. We should learn that now, not when you meet. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> I'm very excited right now. <laughs> and, and also, since uh, we, we, we attend the, conf, the training from Ralph, and Ralph was so touched, uh, so care for us he give a lot of training he not he only give us training he always he when we the first year we learn this um, home care training the second year we already start doing conference just now there is a participant ask uh is this training have later on we have repeat or not you know every year from 2016 18 and 19 every year we have conference every year we have different conference we start from from elderly conference to middle age conference and to early childhood conference. So now this elderly conference is the second one, which the first one we do it in, we did it in Penang, and this is the second one in KL. So we don't miss this conference. You should come. Don't miss. Okay. And I would like also to share something uh, what I learned from uh, the anthroposophy um, uh, knowledge is that all the applications that we apply to the patient is not is something different from we take medicine. When we take medicines, is the medicine work for you? You do not need to work. It's just like you have a maid at home. He do he he or she do all the housework for you, and you are just stay there and relax. So by then, one day, if your mate is a run away, what happened to you? You don't know how to do your housework already. <laughs> but anthroposophy home care application is something different. Why? He will kickstart or rebuild your system so that your body natural system will work for you. Why are we sick? Because our system fail. So all this application is to awake our normal immune system, normal system uh, the normal, our body normal system to kickstart them so that the body know how to work for us. It's just like normal when you are healthy, when you eat food, your stomach know how to digest. You no need to tell your stomach how to digest. Hey, you are you supposed to get, uh, release the, the stomach acid to digest my food. You no need to tell them. You don't even need to push a button to tell them what to do but the stomach know how to do. That is the way our body system work. But when we sick, the, the, they forgot their work. So the applications that we learn from anthroposophy home care is to kickstart, to rebuild, okay? To tell them, hey, wake up, you should work already. Hmm. That, that is what I mean. Something very layman to explain to you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. I think, is there any others I should tell everyone? 
Uh, it is a very uh, inspired uh, story, you know, that, uh, like your experience because uh, we know vaping so well. And he, she's the one who walked the talk. I mean, she learned and she applied, you know, she's not learned and keep and keep thinking, but she really learned and apply in their daily life. And at the end, you know, she can help, she helps her father uh, during this recovery journey. Yeah. And she also, uh, uh, apart from that, she's so much willing and passionate to share all these skills and the techniques and her knowledge with the community. So she did a lot of uh, classes and also uh, chose, uh, you know, activities that uh, whenever there's a, whenever who needs her help, she definitely uh, there to to give a hand. Yeah, so she's uh, really a good person. I think mean, and it's endorsed the whole thing, you know. So it's something for you to work for yourself, as uh, teacher Rolf uh, mentioned earlier. You know, so it's a method. And when we come to this topic, is aging or elderly care or anything about the health and wellness, it's supposed to be a, we should look in a different approach and multiple uh, perspective, you know, other than uh, the mainstream, um, the healthcare, you know, so that uh, you have more uh, method to apply when you need. And as Weeping mentioned, one very important uh, point is learn now you know don't have to wait until you're old and then you only get to learn this is too late <laughs> it's too late to pick up because by the time maybe you need someone to take care of you not you are the one to take care of yourself and also this is the community you know a community uh, where if you learn all the skill is a community for you to take care of each other yeah not only uh, for your own family yeah. so you can share because you can bring this technique and your knowledge around the places yeah you don't need a very complicated tools you know just all your hand and your heart you know and this is all the symbols um, uh, 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 tools that you need to uh, be prepared yeah so I think there's a uh, there's a Questions and a hand raised, Yang. Yeah, and maybe he has a question that would like to ask. Yang, yeah? do you have a question? Or uh, I just want to ask uh, Wei Ping uh, So, meaning that you use this uh, elderly care technique, so your father didn't have to do the operation, and he was healed completely. Yeah. Ah, that was this very good. Thank you. Yeah. Maybe you can, later on you can share uh, what other things you did for your father. <laughs> you should come and learn from our teacher. Yeah. <laughs> because by telling you, is it, it, you cannot learn through, through that. You should practice. Yeah. Yes. You should come and attend the courses, the training. Yes. Yeah. And also one important point that uh, Wei Ping mentioned to share, this, uh, sharing just now, is about her father's attitude. You know, her willingness to uh, getting you know, her health back and take back uh, her own control of how he could uh, have the better health. This is very important intention. You know, also there's a question like earlier on the participant asked, you know, uh, what about the caregivers and the, the, the care, the, the care, you know, the patient or the person that has a different intention, you know, or different, whether they accept or not or reject. So like for waiting father case is, her father is willing to follow the, you know, to take whatever waiting uh, methods and that to receive the help, receive the help. Yeah, so this is very important. Not only the method, yeah, so it's a wholesome learning, right? Yes, okay. yes, yes, that's right. Yeah, he really, he really accept, you know, willingly to accept uh, what I do for him. Yeah. yeah, that's why I can see that he, he, he recovers so soon. Oh, but otherwise, I saw some of my friends, which their yeah, daughters uh, want to give something to the father, but the father reject. So there's no help for, for these kind of cases. Hmm. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you for being sharing. And uh, let me share again about the information of the conference. Yeah. Okay. So we have... Uh, we have two conferences upcoming. One is elderly care, elderly care in our time. 
Yeah. So for those who are interested, or if you like to find out more and learn more about this elderly care with uh, our dear teacher Rob, then please join us uh, this coming uh, conference uh, in August 19 and 20th. Yeah, so we'll share the links and information uh, in, in the group as well, in, or in our social media. And there's another learning also facilitated by our teacher Rob, is mapping my own life path. Yeah, it is a biography work that is uh, very, that everyone should learn this, uh, you know, to know how we, uh, to find out the, our life, what the meaning of our life and how we can see, you know, or when, how we can face the challenges or receive whatever we come to our, uh, we come to the, our front. This is one another, a key learning that we are recommend, okay? So uh, our team will share all this information uh, to the group as well as to our social media yeah and so much and uh, thank you so much uh, teacher uh, Roth you know all the way from uh, Germany to online with us yeah appreciate your time and uh, see you in Kuala Lumpur thank you very much Samantha thank you very much Ping. it was a great presentation from you yes thank you, thank you. and yeah um, looking forward to seeing Lots of you. Yes, see you soon. Yeah, see you soon, sir. And thanks, Weeping, for your experience uh, sharing. And I believe your sharing could be inspired a lot of people here, you know. And of course, uh, if you'd like to find out more and in depth, you know, do join us uh, this coming August. Yeah, once again, thank you, Teacher Rob and Weeping. Thanks for your time and thanks for you all to joining us tonight. Thank you.